Hello, this is Fred Gago, and I'm going to demonstrate how to create the illusion of space using Sketchbook Pro number six. Uh, start by opening up the program. And uh, this lesson is about space, so the first space I want to consider is the actual space between myself and the canvas. I'm going to hold down the space bar and bring up my zoom puck and scroll to the left to zoom out. You can also move left, right, up and down. And I just want to move the canvas away from me so I can work in big broad strokes. Even further than that. I'm going to start by using my airbrush tool. Also going to open up my Copic marker library. I'm also going to open up my colors palette. I have my palette uh, set to I'm on the sliders menu, and I'm using the HSB sliders, Command 4. Uh, HSB stands for Hue, Saturation, and Brightness. And I use these in conjunction with each other so that I can pick a base color and then alter it uh, as need be. I'm going to start with a nice blue to start painting in our sky for a simple landscape. Uh, before I get started, I'm also going to make my layers palette. This is the layers palette. You could also find it down here. And this is already named background so I'm gonna leave it alone. And what I'm going to do is make a... I adjust my brush size with the brackets left and right. Adjustments can also be made here with the brush properties menu that opens up with the sliders. Um, I like my flow at around 50%. I'm going to pick a nice blue. How about sky blue? And I'm going to start laying in color by making a crisscross type of motion. And I'm doing this very loose crisscross so that I can start creating some textures in my sky already. You can see where the white shines through, it's already starting to give the illusion of clouds. I also want to build up uh, the paint so that it is darker towards the top than it is towards our horizon line. And I'm also going to consider my uh, body of water that I want to have in this piece. Uh, so I'm going to paint that in the bottom as well. Now, you can color pick. Once you start laying down color on your canvas, you can hold down the option key with any brush, and this dropper will icon will appear. And you can select any color that you want. You can see that the color will change here in the color puck and also here in my color uh, menu palette there. So I'm going to maybe go a little darker. And when I'm painting in my water, I'm not going to crisscross. I'm actually going to go from left to right, right to left, and do long vertical lines. And I'm also considering my horizon line. So both the sky and the, the water plane are going to fall into the horizon in the background. And by doing that, I mean get lighter towards the background. And this is a great base for our sky and our water. I'm also going to pick some of this white. I'm going to assume that my sun, my major light source, is kind of here around the horizon, a little higher, and that it would be reflecting into the water. And I'm just kind of making the, the center area a little lighter where I think the sun will be reflecting off of it the most. Now that we have this base, 
I like to click in our layers palette on this plus icon to create a new layer. Click and drag over to the right to where it says rename layer. I'm going to name this midground. And I'm going to use my chisel brush tool. It's the chisel tip marker, I believe. Chisel tip pen. There you go. And I'm going to make the brush size as large as I can. I'm going to pick this uh, Prussian blue. And I'm going to start blocking in uh, my mountains. Now, for your mountains, you want to get some nice graphic shapes. I like to make a nice multi-peaked mountain. I'm thinking they're going to be snow-tipped, snow-covered, which is always fun to paint and draw. All right, now I am not worried about anything that is happening in this space. But what I am concerned with is just filling in some color towards the tips, our darkest color. And the reason I'm doing this and not filling in the whole space is because I'm going to use one of our smudge tools in a second to kind of pull the paint out like we would in a real painting. I'm going to experiment with this and just do it until I get a shape that I like. If there's something I don't like, I can always use my hard eraser brush and use a subtractive, subtractive method of drawing and kind of carving away at the pieces I don't want. And go back to my chisel tip. And I think that's good for now. I could also use, by holding down V, if I'm not happy about the placement of this layer, I can hold down the V key. And like the zoom key, I can click here on the outer perimeter to just drag it wherever I want it to go. Now, I'm going into our brush menus here. Our, and here are all the brushes that we can select from. We have our smudge tools, our smear tools. I'm going to use our smudge here. And I already have this set to be at a very low opacity and very minimal strength. And what I'll do is I will use this to start pulling the paint that, that I've already laid down. And what you can see is it's creating uh, a translucency but it is making a new set of colors for me to be able to choose from. And that'll be very important very soon. Because we want this mountain to fall off. The light will diffuse off of this mountain. And as it gets to the ground, it'll look like it's disappearing. But that's because there's atmosphere and uh, could be pollution, just could be mist. Uh, I'm going to go back into my brushes and I'm going to use one of my texture brushes uh, something simple here and I'm going to use my color picker by again holding option and pick one of these like middle tones I'm also going to uh, for the time being lock my transparent layer by clicking this means I won't be able to paint outside of the existing layer if I have that turned off I can free paint but I actually want to stay within the confines of the pre-existing paint but you'll notice that it doesn't really fill in the area um, where the paint falls off so I'm not gonna worry about that too much just yet just kind of set up some interesting areas I'm not being too methodical right now. I'm just kind of keeping an idea that I want this side of the mountains uh, lit more than the, uh, the other plane of it. 
I think it's a good time to turn my transparency layer back on and kind of just keep constantly uh, color picking uh, from different areas that you've already laid out and to help blend this. Toggle your brush size using your brackets and I would always suggest lowering your opacity so that you can just build up. Once you have some hard graphic shapes then you can play a little more with the opacity and then quickly build these mountainous shapes. I'm gonna use my airbrush tool and select one of these colors and make this nice and soft towards the bottom. I'm gonna use my hard eraser tool again to adjust some of these shapes. And what I'll do is now I will lock my transparent layer again. I will go and use another one of these texture brushes. Uh, camo is one of my favorites, but I think I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try charcoal a little bit. I'll use plenty of camo later when I introduce the foliage. I'm gonna play with my parameters. I kind of want it to scale and scatter a little bit. Uh, I don't want it to look. Um, too, f too uniform. I'm gonna pick one of my lighter whites and I don't want to use pure white because as you'll notice if I pick uh, from here we can see in my hue saturation brightness sliders that my percentage isn't 100% white. I want some of this color that's in there. So even if it's at 3-4% you'll notice that once I start painting in here see. Let me up my opacity just a bit. It'll start to show. We just want to be very subtle at the moment. We'll build up slowly. And we just want to add little bits of texture to give the illusion of realism. Some snow. And we will be toggling the brushes. I'm just kind of let that set it up. Maybe I'll go into one of my more standard brushes. Again, I'll lower my opacity. Uh, keep my brush size a little medium. There you go. This is a great setup to our mountains. Um, let's see, I will go back with my pencil tool and kind of color pick some of the areas and then selectively carve out some shapes that I, I'd like to see um, that I didn't get naturally with my paint. It's okay to do this. Remember, we want to stay nice and graphic. We don't want to get too detailed. Um, with the pencil tool, you know, you, you can't make the brush all that big. That's why it's good to mix things up. Try the, the standard marker as well. Get some interesting mixing. Um, my suggestion is to always just start light. See if it's working. Um, I'll try this again. I'm going to unlock my transparent layer and make this a little more interesting and make sure that this doesn't just fall off the page into oblivion. Make sure our light source kind of stays consistent. Go back to our airbrush.
We can even use our soft eraser if we feel like we're just getting a little too much towards the bottom. And this is a great start for our mountains. Uh, again, I'll always go in and chisel out with the hard eraser. Also, uh, I like to go back into my background, maybe pick uh, a nice yellow to you know, indicate our sunlight. We're not going to go too yellow, it's just going to be very, very light. Um, let's try this nice warm buttercup yellow. And I'm going to make my flow very small. And I'm going to go with large brush, and I'm just going to and a hint at this warm color back here. Yeah. And it helps to give overall richness to the, the piece. I constantly like to zoom out to as small as my thumb, business card, anything of that nature so that I just get a good quick strong read 